Do you think it's super hot and sexy when men wear Huckberry? Totally. Yeah, wow, that's cool. That's, I agree. All right, hello everybody. My name is Michael. I run another YouTube channel called The Iron Snail, but if you don't know me, it's very nice to meet you. Today we're looking at the Railwind Wind Zip Popover. Also, it's like 20 something degrees, it's very cold, so expect me to slur my words and get generally drunk looking throughout this video. But this is a very warm popover, and we're gonna go review it in the woods. So, here we go. Today's agenda what makes this popover special? Hint the answer is nylon and polyester. How should you size? Warmth levels, and four, the magic of this popover. There's an interview with the founder of Railwind, and he says that the Wind Zip collection is based off of a sleeping bag, which is very cool, and it has one inch baffles along any of the products that they have. So this is the popover, there's also a zip up and there's also a hoodie. They're all basically the same technology in different forms. Fascinating to me that it was based off of a sleeping bag. These one inch baffles are made to be smaller so that way you can compress it easily. We'll get into insulation and how polyester fill also aids you in that. But a fun fact to start us all off here is that the outside of this is made of nylon, the inside of this is made of polyester. Quick nylon fun fact, it was invented in the 1930s and the original slogan that was used to sell it was that it's as strong as steel and nylon had to walk that back because because people were so scared that the fabric wouldn't rip if they needed it to, like if they were stuck inside the fabric for whatever reason, they are afraid they wouldn't be able to get out. So nylon had to walk that claim back, although it's very true. Okay, but anyway, sizing for this, it's pretty simple. I would just say stick true to size. I have a pretty heavy wool sweater over this, also from Huckberry, Alex Mill, and I have plenty of room to move around. That has to do with the composition of the fabric, which we'll talk about in a second, but really stick true to size is kind of that perfect balance of you can layer if you want to, you don't have to layer, you can put something over it if you need to. So very simple. Stick true to size. Have I mentioned that yet? Okay, for how warm this jacket or this popover can be worn in, you kind of have to ignore the fact that I'm wearing a giant wool sweater underneath it. I run very cold comfortably. If you're walking and you're moving, I would say you could probably wear this jacket from like maybe 55 degrees to like 30s, maybe a little colder, depending on how aggressively you're walking, but it's great. It is 60 gram synthetic fill, polyester fill. Now there's down and there's synthetic. They both have their pros and cons, but the real pro for synthetic is that polyester is the fill that they use on the inside and it's structured to simulate down, but but the benefit of polyester is it basically doesn't absorb any water. I think it's like a 0% retention rate. Nylon is a little bit higher, which we'll talk about in a second, but if you get wet or if it starts raining, polyester fill will not only dry off faster and make you comfortable quicker, it will also still retain some of its insulation properties when down, for the most part, will not. Either way, very warm, very nice. Okay, now I want to talk about a specific section of the wind zip, really just this section and then on the actual zip up one, the whole thing. What's really fascinating is there's two ways to fasten this top to really keep the wind out. Well, actually there's three. So there is a storm flap, which is great already. So even if you just button this closed, wind or rain or sleet or whatever, wouldn't get in as much. But then there is also, and I can't touch it because I'm mic'd, I'm hot right now. Do you think it's super hot and sexy when men wear Huckberry? Totally. Yeah, wow, that's cool. That's, I agree. But there is a zipper to help further keep the wind out, and then, of course, there is also buttons over that, which we'll get into in a second. And that's not anything that other brands haven't done or anything like that, but it goes very, very far when you're actually going for a hike and it's windy and you want to block out the wind on your neck. This way, you actually don't have wind getting in any corners, which is very nice. Now, the buttons... That's where things get interested. This is a microphone, this is not a button. Now what's really interesting about these buttons is they kind of show Railwind's intention of making long lasting quality products. And I, that sounds butt kissy, but really what I mean is you can't make buttons that are built to age beautifully if the rest of the garment won't stand up to that because then it actually detracts from the garment. But anyways, butt kissiness aside, these are black oxidized buttons. It's typically seen in more heritage wear like denim products. What happens is these buttons are black when you first get them. And as you wear this garment, of course the rest of it will age. You can wash it, it'll look different. You can patch it, which would look beautiful if you're going on some really intense hikes. But what's really interesting is that buttons are typically made up of a few different metals, so you can get different qualities. The base is usually brass, and then they are plated with some other metal, and that's usually where things stop. But on this garment, it goes a step further. These are black oxidized buttons. So what happens is, as you bump into things, or the buttons get scraped or whatever, the black gets scraped away to reveal a coppery color underneath, and then that copper color is the plating. So as that gets worn in, it'll turn into a brass color. And then as you probably know, both copper and brass are live metals, so they will also age and change color and morph and look cool over time. So theoretically, after wearing this for a very, very long time, your buttons will all be custom and very unique to you, which is where I poop my pants. That's where I lose my mind. I'm like, wow, this is, look at how special I've made this. 
This jacket is made up of nylon and polyester, two synthetic materials that both, they have a lot of similarities, but they also have some benefits that this garment utilizes in a very cool way. The outside is nylon, the inside is polyester, so that's fascinating. They both share so much of the same properties that you're really not losing too much, it's just that extra attention to detail. Polyester and nylon are extremely tough, both very abrasion resistant, tear resistant, fantastic materials. The outside of this is also 94% polyester and 6% spandex. And that 6% spandex is why it's so easy to layer, because you can continue to have a full range of movement even if you're really packing something under there, even if it's your big fat gut. Nylon and polyester share a lot of similarities. Their water retention rates are slightly different, which is where things get interesting. So the outside of this is nylon, which is a tougher material when compared to polyester in a few different ways, which makes it more beneficial to have on the outside of the garment. You see it in tents, you see it in parachutes, but on average, if it gets wet, it will retain 2% of water, so it takes a little longer to dry. Of course, you have polyester fill, which takes care of that, and there's a big butt at the end. But the inside of this garment is polyester, which takes in zero. So the nice part is the actual clothing around you will stay drier and the outside, although it retains 2% of his water, is a very, very, very low amount of water retention. Cotton takes in, I think it's over 50%. It really saturates. And the outside of this, I believe, is treated with a DWR finish, a durable water repellent spray, which you do need to reapply every, you know, three or four seasons if you're wearing this heavily. But that takes care of the one pitfall of nylon in that regard anyways. It makes this a literal perfect garment if you're going somewhere where it's raining or it's misty. So that's what's very cool. Okay, and the last thing I will say, which is part of the review, is I now know the guys at Huckberry very, very well. I've talked to them a lot, they're my friends, and I know the brands and the guys that own the brands that they associate themselves with, and that's an amazing pairing. They're all really nice guys that if they were here, we'd probably all go for a hike and chat and, you know, get food after or something like that. But that's a big thing. I just like the environment of Huckberry and who they surround themselves with. But anyways, if you'd like to walk in the woods or just go out with friends and be really casual, toss this on in the morning when you're going to get a coffee, it's kind of perfect. I'm keeping my batteries for the camera in this pocket right now, but you can fit your phone. It's really built just to be easy, just to, when you have to go get the mail in the morning, you don't have to put on this whole contraption. You just toss this on and go out. Probably even the one with the zipper would be more convenient. But anyways, thank you so much, Huckberry. Battery on my camera died right as I said where I was keeping the batteries. Isn't that funny? But anyways, the Rowan wind zip popover, Fantastic. I want to get the zip up one too. Thank you so much Huckberry for letting me make videos on your channel Hopefully you like this video and I can make another one I'll talk to you all very soon at the iron snail if Huckberry blacklists me, which I don't think they will. We're good friends